Bone disease is a very common problem associated with multiple myeloma. It is, in fact, one of the pathognomic features of myeloma. You know, when you think about crab criteria, the B in the crab stands for bone disease. And really, um, it is present, I would argue, in the majority of myeloma patients. And the question is, how hard do we look for bone disease in patients with myeloma? Uh, the reason for patients to have uh, uh, bone-related problems in the context of multiple myeloma is, um, you know, and this is data which has gone back now years, wherein we've shown that bone metabolism is significantly impacted in the context of myeloma. You have two different cell types, osteoclasts, which are the bone-destroying cells, and osteoblasts, which are the bone-forming cells, which are at complete odds in the context of myeloma. And we also know that the myeloma tumor cells or the myeloma cells feed into this vicious cycle wherein they cause an increase in osteoclastogenesis, that is the bone destroying cells, and there's very little, if any, osteoblastic activity, that is the bone healing part of it. And there's a whole bunch of proteins and cytokines which we've identified as factors which could be contributing to this. And this is that interaction between the tumor cell and the bone own microenvironment, which then results in osteolytic disease, which is very classic of multiple myeloma. And, you know, if you want to think about osteolytic disease simplistically, it is an extreme form of osteoporosis, uh, wherein you can actually get those bony lesions that I'm talking about. And the reason it's really important to try and identify this and treat this proactively is because this can result in pretty significant morbidity in the way of bone pain, fractures, and some of the acute uh, sort of emergencies that we know of in oncology, such as hypercalcemia and cord compression can be a consequence of bone disease. I think we should start out by thinking about how do you diagnose bone disease in patients with multiple myeloma and the International Myeloma Working Group has now come up with imaging modalities. Um, up until recently, we were using x-rays to diagnose uh, uh, bony related problems. So skeletal surveys was part of routine workup for multiple myeloma patients. That has changed with the new guidelines and our recommendation is really to use either a whole body low dose CAT scan or a PET CT scan or an MRI as an initial diagnostic tool. And the reason for that is x-rays are able to pick up bone disease in patients where you have more than 50% of bone loss. So the bone loss is pretty extreme by the time it shows up on an x-ray. And therefore, it's important to use more sensitive criteria to pick up on bone disease. And this is sort of incorporated into the new working diagnosis of multiple my symptomatic multiple myeloma. So you don't necessarily have to have symptoms, but if on imaging modalities, you have evidence of bone disease, that's enough for us to warrant treatment for uh, myeloma and the uh, uh, associated bone disease as well. So imaging is really important. Uh, we've completely replaced skeletal surveys, at least at my center, and we're doing whole body low dose CAT scans. It's an easy test. It takes about a minute and a half. It does not expose a patient to that much more radiation, and it has a sensitivity of near 90%. So you're able to pick up bone disease in a lot of patients. The other thing I will say is, you know, uh, diagnosing is important, but trying to prevent some of the complications that I've talked about with bone disease are really very important to diminish the morbidity. And we also know that if you have the morbidity associated with bone disease, it is associated with worsening uh, outcomes in terms of mortality as well. So it's critical that we pick up on it and critical that we proactively treat it. So the best treatment for bone disease for myeloma is treat the underlying myeloma. Once you treat the underlying myeloma, patients are going to have a lot less in terms of bony-related complications. And the 
the other things we have now for years is the use of um, uh, amino bisphosphonates. So we use either permidronate or zoledronic acid for the treatment of bone disease. And we now have a new monoclonal antibody, which is a rank ligand inhibitor called denosumab, which is also used for the treatment of myeloma-related bone disease.